The Fano report into the 2020 mass shooting that killed 22 people has now been released. Two years of testimony, evidence, and interviews led to a massive document that is critical of the police response and provides recommendations. CTV's Todd Battis breaks it all down for us. There are 3,000 pages of findings and recommendations documenting the confusion and chaos over the 13 hours a gunman was loose in central Nova Scotia. The obstacles faced by officers and barriers put in front of families of the 22 victims. Who are you shooting at? The inquiry commissioners say RCMP officers didn't know where to go, couldn't communicate with each other, and didn't properly warn the public, saying the RCMP had not prepared for how to best notify community members and execute a large-scale evacuation of citizens from a hot zone while an active threat was in progress. It took more than 12 hours to tell the public the shooter was driving a mock RCMP cruiser. The police, the report says, failed to properly inform and support survivors and victims' families. When it came to the gunman, the commission concludes there were warning signs, but nothing was done about them. In perhaps the most damning entry, the commission finds, quote, more than two years after the event, RCMP leadership has done very little to evaluate its critical response to the deadliest shooting in Canada's history, end quote. Among the many recommendations, the commission says the federal government should prohibit semi-automatic handguns, semi-automatic rifles, and shotguns with magazines of more than five rounds. Create a national hub for mass casualty responses. It calls on Nova Scotia to maintain adequate policing services. For the national police force, it urges the RCMP to adopt a policy of admitting mistakes and publicize important information immediately. So that report from Todd Battis. I want to bring in Todd now. He is standing by with more of the breaking details from this report. Um, Todd, you've just laid it out for us, really failures to communicate with the public. And, and, and as you emphasize in that report, the RCMP really doing little to respond since the time of the shooting. Mm. Where are we going to go today, do you think, with this report? What will we hear? And, and what do you anticipate the reaction will be in the room from the family members to this report? Well, it, th that's the interesting question on the, on the families, right, Marcia? Because from the outset, they have said that they don't believe that this inquiry was set up with their best intentions in mind. Um, they, they had numerous uh, objections to the way it proceeded throughout the two years, two years that this uh, commission held hearings. Uh, they felt that they were uh, left out of the process, that they weren't, uh, they were upset that they weren't through their lawyers able to um, uh, uh, put questions to uh, some of the people who were testifying in front of the hearings. The hearings uh, some people didn't, didn't even appear in person. They were on video. Some people didn't appear on video at all. Um, so there was a lot of frustration. I suspect you will hear some of that echoed today. Now, there are plenty of recommendations, uh, some of the things uh, of which we've heard from the families that they want to see change. So as we know, in this country, having a massive report full of recommendations doesn't necessarily mean they will be acted upon. And that's really where the rubber will hit the road with this. Right. And that's as you point out, the concern that it just gathers dust on a shelf somewhere. Yeah, um, yeah. there's certainly a history of that in this country. Yeah, yeah. So we've got the Prime Minister there today, the Premier's going to be there today. What is your take on mm -hmm. the significance of having um, our political leaders there to hear the recommendations? Why, why be there? I think there's a couple of things going on here. You remember at the time of the shooting, almost three years ago now, April, uh, April 18th and 19th of uh, 2020, we were in the pandemic. Uh, Prime Minister couldn't come to uh, offer his uh, uh, condolences. Nobody could enter the province. Uh, the, the Premier of Nova Scotia was uh, very forceful before this inquiry began, and he reiterated what a lot of family members of the victims were saying, that he was concerned about uh, the function of this 
commission and whether it would um, get to the essence of what victims' families wanted. Uh, he, he, was, he was quite vocal in his criticism. I suspect uh, that Tim Houston of Nova Scotia, the Premier, will, um, will be there in a capacity to support uh, the family members and, and perhaps to support uh, the outcome of this report as well. Uh, the Minister of uh, Public Safety, Mr. Mendocino, is here. That's significant as well as the Prime Minister, of course, because uh, there are plenty of recommendations here for the RCMP to uh, enact real change, substantial change. And the presence of those two here could indicate that, uh, that they plan to put these recommendations into effect.